prime of it, you know, people people were catching a lot and and, and maybe took the abundance somewhat for granted. Mm. Right? You could go out and, and, and I remember when uh, he told me that the first time he went offshore and there was more lobsters there than you could ever imagine. We contributed to the, the down of, downturn of the fishery is uh, a lot of it is is technology today. We just got too smart. Some of the some of the equipment today that they don't they don't miss the school. If they find a school of fish, once they find it, they stay right with it until they got the whole school. Years ago, well, you picked them up on a sander or something, and you sat through them. Well, you got a few, and then the school scatters, and then you you got to go searching. But now they just they just know they got talk technology enough they can stay right with the fish. And they even can tell what fish it is before they even sell them. They know whether they're setting for for haddock or or cod, or they they know just by the shape and the formation of the school what it is before they even set. So yeah, I think we've sort of outsmarted ourselves with technology and a certain amount of greed too. But we always felt like hook and line. If it was a state at hook and line, you can only catch the fish if he waits the hook. <laughs> That's the only you can't make them bite. But if a drag comes along and scoops you, you're done for, no matter what size you are. If you're too small, you get smashed up in the mesh and, and too big, and you get you anyway. So, Big codfish were worth a dollar a pound, small fish were, were worth 30 cents a pound, and what were we going to bring in? So we were dumping fish, no question, and everybody was doing it, and I imagine at the time the longliners were doing it too, to try to... Make, you had to make money. If you were going to make $3,000 or $10,000, you know, yeah. split among everybody, there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And we had told fisheries at the time they were making a mistake, right? They should have gave, my opinion is they should have gave us a day, so many days at sea, and whatever we catch, we brought in. And some fish, fishermen wouldn't have caught any that day, but some would have caught, you know. Mm -hmm. And they would have brought every, everything in, small fish, big fish, because only had so many hours to do it. I think probably 60 to 70 percent of the damage that was done off here is, is habitat destruction. Um, we, yes, you can take out the big uh, breeders out of a species, but usually enough will survive to, if someday you decide to stop killing them, they can bring it back. But if you go and clog up their spawning area so bad that an egg can't survive, then, then you've pretty well, you know, you, you've, you've done the trick. <laughs> you go to any five, grade 5 class in Nova Scotia, you put the facts before the students in that class, and they'll tell you, don't do it. No greed, sense. And Greed takes away your sense. And my God, there's a lot of senseless people. <laughs> you know, nature needs help. Give it half a chance. Give, keep everybody away from the spawning fish. Keep gear that damages the bottom away from spawning areas and hard bottom. Maybe they can rake back and forth through the muck. Uh, you know, uh, mud, I don't know, it may do harm, but I don't think it would do near as much harm. But the only way for it to come back very quick, I would think, is to close it to everybody for a certain time and then just ease as the catches come up, or the stalks come up, as the stalks come up, don't you bark. As the stocks come up, and then you have to ease the fishermen back in it slowly. And you know, if, if things keep on going how they're going, there's going to be nothing. There's, there's going to be nothing left for me, right? There's going to be nothing left for my kids someday. You know, some some does definitely have to change because I I've already since I started fishing with my dad, I've I've see, seen things change. You know, I, I I've seen the lobster industry go from really awesome prices and, and everybody was making money to go completely downhill. The, the fishery around here is definitely a 
huge source of concern because what are we going to do without it? You know, you're not going to want to get tourists just to come down here and see the rocks. They want to see the heritage. They want to see the maritimes, the fishery, the, you know, the fresh seafood. In a maritime community, that's pretty much the lifeblood is, is the fishery, whether it's, whether it's for cod or herring or mackerel or lobsters or crabs, anything. If, if, there's a, if there's a crash in, in any of the fisheries, you're going to most definitely see a crash in the communities around here. If you took fishing out of, out of these communities, you, you know, everybody would suffer for sure. You know, how can people afford to go buy stuff? How can people afford new vehicles? How, how can people afford groceries to some extent if, if you have no fishery? We need to have something that can be regulated. We need to have something that, that not only has to be regulated, it has to be what everybody wants to do. It, it, you know, it has to be something that everybody gets together and does. Because if, if, if everybody doesn't get together, then, then one person in, in this situation can't make a difference. I, I would definitely say that, that we do need a change of some sort. Now, what, exactly what that change is, I couldn't tell you. You know, it definitely, to come up with ideas, it, it needs brainstorming on more than just my behalf. Right? You need, you need to get everybody to brainstorm on ideas that of something we could do to change things. But in, unless we do work at, at making some change, then I don't think that, that, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to stand the impact of what we're doing. Fishermen clearly recognize that changes need to be made before it is too late. CPAWS is working with fishermen and coastal communities around Nova Scotia to explore conservation options and find ways to protect important habitat in order to allow species to begin to recover. To find out more about the work of CPAWS and ways you can help support increased oceans protection, visit cpawsns.org.